Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. Today I'm going to be talking about around 15 things that I no longer buy thanks to zero waste living, eco-minimalism, trying to save money and be frugal and just trying to live a bit more sustainably and not bring things into my life that I don't necessarily need. If you're new here and you like things all sustainable living, how we implement those ideas and habits into our everyday life, then hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss another video. And if you want to support this channel, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, just a quick thank you to Squarespace for always supporting my channel and always supporting my content. But we'll talk about them a little bit later on. Let's get into it. So I recently did a video, Things I No Longer Do, thanks to Sustainable Living, which was more about habits that I have built. And this is kind of looking more at the ways that those habits have kind of informed the way that I purchase and consume and things that I no longer buy because of this and because of these habits that I've built. So the first one is I no longer buy plant milk. One of the things I said in my last video was I don't look to convenience for a first, especially things that I can make at home. So plant milk has definitely been something that has been a trial and error for a long time still find it difficult to make a plant-based milk that really goes well in my coffee but I like the taste of homemade milk a lot more and when I get soy milk right it goes really well in coffee but I still haven't perfected it. The second thing is I never buy any tech firsthand and I have talked about this before because tech can be incredibly wasteful and in one of my videos of things I'm not buying this year as part of my minim minimalism series that I did at the beginning of the year was saying no new camera gear and I've been really good and anything that I have bought has been secondhand but I've kept it to an absolute minimum because again I'm trying to save money and not bring things into my life that I just don't need and put a lot more emphasis on the stuff that I do have and getting better at using the equipment that I do have. Not rely on a camera being better to make better content. The third thing is I don't buy basics anymore, new or fast fashion. I only ever get basics that are kind of secondhand because I just don't necessarily see the need to. Number four, beauty tools. Now I do have a couple that I use for some powder and things like that but I bought those quite a long time ago and I really ensure that I take good care of them. I decided to invest in a better tool or a tool that I thought would last a lot longer and by taking care of it, washing them frequently and drying them and you know being careful with them I'm trying to make sure that I have them for as long as possible. But I also just don't wear that much makeup anymore so I have very little need for any new beauty tools at all. Number five is heat products. Now if you know me, I've said it a million times, I'm on a curly journey. I no longer buy straighteners but I also actually don't buy any kind of hair dryers or, or anything like that and it's not because I don't, I'm against diffusers and things like that, I think that they are wonderful. It's just because I personally have damaged my hair so much over the last decade plus that I'm trying really hard to just leave it to do its natural thing and to be its beautiful self. So no heat products, I just don't buy them anymore and I've got no interest in buying them in the future either. Number six is I don't ever buy a new winter coat, ever. I haven't replaced mine for many years. I bought one several years ago that I absolutely love. I take really good care of it. I've had the, the buttons sewn back on and that's about it. But if I did want a winter coat that was more suitable for colder weather, I would always buy it secondhand because winter coats are so expensive, especially if they are a kind of Michigan style winter coat. When I was in Michigan, I went to the local thrift shop and my friends and I, we all bought secondhand winter coats because our climates back at home were not like that. So it would have been just unnecessary to have bought a winter coat for that, like a new one that was really good quality because we were only gonna be there for one season. Little did I know. So nowadays I love my winter coat that I bought several years ago. I use it every single autumn, winter, and even a bit in spring to be fair. But apart from that, if I needed a new winter coat, especially when I moved to the US, if I moved to Colorado, for example, I'm gonna need a a thicker coat, but I will always buy it second hand because it will be so much cheaper, so much more affordable, but also better. There's so many second hand coats that are just out there. Number seven is no more bags. I have a backpack for smart occasions, for hiking, and my grim bag for like every day. And I also have a bum bag. So that is four bags that I have. I really don't need any more. I don't need a new purse, a little, little bag for this occasion, a side bag for, no. I don't need any more bags. These are just things that I don't buy anymore. I have one for each occasion that I could possibly even think of. And that's it. No 
more. Number eight is I never ever buy boxes or envelopes or anything to send stuff in to other people. Most of all my boyfriend, but if I sold something or I'm no longer using an item and my friend would use it, I will send it in a box or something like that. But I will always use something that has been either sent to me or sent to a family member and make sure I'm reusing because especially nowadays, everyone is buying stuff online, my mum in particular. So I always try and reuse those boxes to send off rather than just having them recycled. Number nine is I don't buy perfume anymore. I just don't care. Number 10, you probably know this, but I don't buy disposable razors. I have had the same reusable razor for literally five years. I bought this at the beginning of my zero waste journey and I still use it, still love it. It was a great swap for me. It might not be the best swap for you. I'm just putting it out there. But for me, it meant that I haven't used a disposable razor in over five years. Obviously, if you don't shave, then you don't use any razors. That's also a winner. So number 11 is I don't buy candles anymore. And I think this speaks to a wider question about who we think we are and who we know ourselves to be or who we want to be. I don't know if that makes sense, but I used to buy candles because I thought everyone else was saying what a beautiful atmosphere they create and you're this kind of person if you buy candles, but I'm not that kind of person, you know? I just forget that I have them. I don't actually want something creating smoke in my room after I've blown it out. I never like the smell of them that much because they seem to be too strong or too sweet. And I was only ever buying candles because I'd watch these, you know, aesthetic things where people had candles and why? I just don't, I just don't buy them anymore. My boyfriend does. I don't. Number 12, I do not upgrade my phone. And I put this in my 100 zero waste swaps you have to try video. And a lot of people didn't understand what I meant. They thought I meant don't upgrade the software on the phone. And that's not what I mean. If you're on a contract, your phone is often, or every every time your contract ends, they offer to upgrade your phone or if every year. I'm not quite sure how it works. I haven't been on a contract like that on four years, but I do not pay for an expensive plan. I do not buy an expensive plan where I am paying for a phone as well as my SIM card. I have a SIM only card, SIM only contract. I have a SIM only contract and I spend 10 pounds a month and that is it because my phone was second hand and I don't upgrade my phone ever because one, I think that's incredibly wasteful and two, I don't want to pay for a new phone when I have a perfectly good phone and I don't want to pay for a really expensive plan. This is also how I save money by not upgrading my phone and not sort of paying all these additional rates for, yeah, as I said, secondhand phones are way more, are way more affordable. And also this, it just, it's just so wasteful to upgrade your phone every year. I just don't understand why people do it. So I'm in the process of creating and understanding sort of a color palette for, for me, for the way that I wear clothes, for the clothes that I choose, for my skin tone. And I actually discovered this recently from a channel uh, by Audrey Coyne. I think that's how you say her name. And it's such an excellent idea. I'd never thought about this because I don't really follow fashion-y people, but she gives really good advice and I really love her channel now. I first became aware of the idea of the color palette from her. As I said, not a fashion-y person. I'm sure everyone who's into fashion knows about this, but it's really, really helped me to just immediately kind of say no to items that don't really suit me color wise. So if I stick to this color palette, then I know what suits me, what works well for me, what I like as well. And I won't be lulled into thinking, oh, this item, I really need it. My wardrobe is lacking that color, so I should really get it. No. Having a color palette and thinking about that has really helped me to stop buying clothes that I just wouldn't usually buy because of either context or emotions or some kind of lack or, or feeling of FOMO because it looks good on somebody else. Yeah, it's been a really good thing for me. So color palette prevents me from buying things I don't love. 14, I no longer buy physical cookbooks. And it's because I just never used them. I thought that I would use them all the time, but I never think to look through them. When I'm thinking about wanting to go for a new recipe, I will honestly just look online for a blog post or something that I can look at quickly. I re very rarely will go to my mum's shelf, pick up a cookbook and scroll through them. Even though my mum does this all the time, like she really loves a cookbook and will always look through them, but I just never do. So, <sighs> I no longer buy them. 
The last thing is I no longer buy of the moment or trendy skincare. And that's because skincare is so personal. It's something I've really been getting into recently. I like a minimal, simple skincare routine. I like things that actually are working for my skin in particular, obviously, and not somebody else's. I'm not gonna buy something because everyone says that this is the best thing, but really it could just be irritating to my skin. It's so important that we don't jump on trends because everyone says that it works, but it might not work for us. Obviously there are some things that could work, whatever, but there are plenty of things that I have tried that did not work for my skin and I am over it. My skin can only take so much, so yeah. No of the moment, no trendy items, unless they genuinely are built for my skin type, but a lot of them aren't anyway. So those are just 15 things that I no longer buy thanks to zero waste living, eco minimalism, minimalism, sustainable living, that kind of thing. And it's also part of my journey, my low buy year, to save more money and be more frugal and think about the long term, think about where can I put that money instead of into physical items that I might not use for very long or into expensive phone plans that might take away, you know, 50 pounds a month that I could be putting into my savings instead or reinvesting and building a more secure future. So yes, I'm gonna be doing another video soon that's actually on saving money and my my top tips especially from this year on my low buy year some of the things that I found really really important and learning more especially about sustainable investing because a lot of you guys ask me about that so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're interested in more content then you can always follow me on patreon I just wanted to say thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members and send email communications and leverage audience insights. I love creating a community over on Squarespace because I can use their fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies and likes. So if you're interested, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash sustainably vegan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys very, very soon.